This is the current setup. If you can guess what's going on, this is what's going on. <laughs> hey, what's up everyone? <clears throat> oh my god. So as you can tell, I am pretty sick. Um, I have like my tea, my orange juice, and my water on standby. Um, I did take an off day or a sick day yesterday because I literally was just like laying in bed and I got up and I thought I could go to work but my body was literally aching. So I've been asleep for the past few hours, like literally all day yesterday up until now. So I feel a little bit better. I put on lashes just like so you can't see how exhausted I look. But I did want to give you guys all an update on how, as to how my new grad program is going. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine. I'm 22 years old. I graduated in August with my BSN and I took my NCLEX in September. And then I just started my new grad program. New, I just started my new grad program in October as an ER nurse. And <clears throat> honestly, um, the beginning of it, so I'll kind of give you a breakdown of how my new grad program works. So the first week was zero week, which is just orientation, pretty easy week. Um, second week is our first week, so we have 12 weeks of being on the floor. So we do two patients for two weeks, I believe, um, three patients for four weeks, and then the rest of it, we do four patients because ER is four to one. For example, in our hospital, LND gets 16 weeks which was like nice for them because they have more time to orient but I thought that um, ER, ICU, because we're like more critical we would also have the 16 weeks but I guess not 12 weeks and I think I'm on the 6th or 7th week and it's so it's so stressful if you've never actually worked in the ER I feel like there's Like the only type of work that I've done is as a CNA on a psych floor and the vibe of nights as a CNA on the psych floor is very slow. Um, even though I got kind of accustomed to patient care, um, I don't think I ever had the kind of flow of the ER and that really threw me off at first, especially going into three patients. Um, another thing that I noticed like the basic skill for an ER nurse to have is like IVs. They're really slow at them in the beginning. Um, it just like wasn't my thing. It still really isn't my thing, honestly. It's really hard for me. And I think another thing, oh also I didn't, I didn't even mention. So there's five of us that are orienting. There's two on mid shift, which is mids are like 12 to 12 or like one to one or like two to two um there's like two so there's one person on mid shift and then three on day shift and i'm the only one on nights and i think the downfall of that is the fact that i'm working nights and i'm working weekends so literally i just the only thing i ever see is like experienced nurses and it's hard for me because i literally feel like i can't keep up and i feel like no there's no one to match me because everyone's like up here and I'm like down here so it's hard for me not to even like be here so it makes me feel like it's hard to like even I don't even know how to explain it and I know some people may be like just don't compare yourself because those are experienced nurses and they've been doing it for like a year or two already but it's hard not to like if that's what you see every single shift like that's what you're gonna feel so yeah it's been really hard <clears throat> it's been the hardest for me just because I'm literally the only one on my on my shifts I'm the only one on nights everyone else is orienting together and like I literally don't see any of my cohort I see them like once in a while in passing and it's just like we never really get to talk and see how everyone's doing. Um, I am thankful though that we do have the equipment and everything that we need. 
um and i know that being on a specialty unit especially as a new grad is supposed to be like difficult um but i wish there were ways that i could like be better at it like i have never like been the type to hesitate from like trying to do more so that i can learn more and be better but i just feel like everyone keeps just telling me like it comes with time and i'm like i need i know it comes with time but is there anything i could do to make it better so literally i did like things like okay one thing that i was having issues with as in the er we get like all these types of patients so this is what i did instead of trying to convert the weight um by hand i bought this little thing which shows you you probably can't even see i printed it out it's basically the pounds to kilograms because when you do a triage for a patient you have to have that weight especially if they're like code stroke if they're code stroke then you essentially um that weight is going to be what they base like their tpa medication on um another thing we get a lot of peds patients um this just shows you basic um vital signs so for example like what a three-year-old's respiratory rate should be like 20 to 30 just basic stuff like that another thing we do a lot of labs something to make me go faster like these are the things that i'm trying to do to, like make myself go faster um i bought this like digital watch that's going to be in military time so i can just look at my watch and then write the time and then uh, <laughs> My legs have been hurting so bad, like, all I ever want to do on my days off is, like, sit down, because I'm so exhausted from the week. So, I got these compression socks, and then I also got these from Amazon, these clogs from Crocs. And I'll let you know how those all work for me, because, obviously, they're just, like, little things that I bought here and there, hoping that that makes it better. But I really, I did try to reach out to my manager about like my IV skills and how I could do better at that. But I don't, reality is like, I don't feel like my nursing school prepared me to be a nurse. <laughs> oh my God. I don't think anything can really prepare you for it though. Um, I think the best thing would have been if I was like a CNA on that unit already that would have helped me transition because I would have known where everything was already and kind of gotten, gotten accustomed to the people. Um, but right now, it's just a lot harder. But right now, it's just a lot harder for me to even kind of transition. It's week six or seven for me and I only have a couple weeks left. As you can tell, it's flu season and I'm sick and it's hard for me to be sick and to have to ca take care of people who are also sick. So, that's that. And as something that I hold true to whatever they said was when it hits flu season, you get sicker patients because it's like a sick patient plus the flu. They're even sicker than usual. So that's when we get busier and busier on our unit. And it was nice at first. I felt like the flow was really slow at first. Um, but now I feel like it's picking up. I have no idea how to get better and um, if you have any tips leave them down below because I don't even know how to start and I feel like everyone's too scared to tell me sometimes I don't know it's just hard because I know that everyone has their own pace and they want me to pick up the pace but it's hard to find that balance between okay I get it the ER is fast and you have to work fast but also, I'm getting scolded for being inaccurate. Now, like, pace-wise, I can't really, I can't work with the pace that they're expecting me to be at while being accurate. And I don't even know, like, this video is so all over the place. Okay, so, kind of walking you through, like, my shift. So, we get in at 7. Um, most of the time on nights, your beds will be full already. Um, you're assigned to, like... Right now we had three, three to four beds. <clears throat> Most of the time they're they're already full. Um, and then there's a lot of documentation that I've noticed in the ER. So there's triage, there's like a triage one, triage two. There's a primary assessment and then a secondary assessment. Um, 
your biggest thing is just getting the triage paperwork done so that the doctors can like do their thing I don't know there's this whole background that they need to have and then you go in there you assess your patient um, a lot of times I'm thankful that my preceptor like taught me this to go in with the doctor because so that you can get an understanding of the patient and get like the aligning story um, and then the doctor does their assessment and then if you want to do further assessment you can do that most of the time people who come back are usually the most sick because triage people can be treated there and there's level one two three four um, level one is most critical level twos are mostly the people who co like come back to us Level 3s usually stay in triage or they'll come back to us. Usually around like 2 a.m. our triage closes and they go straight back. And then level 4s usually we never see those because they're treated in triage. Um, yeah, so basically that's that. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is my IVs suck. I'm getting really slow at them. And the biggest thing with IVs is like, okay, your IVs determine if you get the labs in, if you get the meds in, and then if you don't get those in, then you're going to get scolded. And if you're going too slow, you're going to get scolded. Um, I get that, that there's supposed to be this flow, but it's just like, I remember the first day, they or the second day or whatever, they were just like, okay, go start your IV. And literally, like it sounds stupid, like it really sounds stupid, but like I blanked out on how to do my IVs. <sighs> And maybe it's because, like, I literally hadn't done them in a month. Or maybe because when I was in the ICU, like, our patients were sedated and it was completely different. But that was that. And it, like, did not go well. And it was just, I don't know, it was just an awful feeling. And then we're getting a lot more critical patients. So we have code stroke, which is the stroke. Code Amy, which is, um heart attack, um, code sepsis, which is, um, septic, we have like a whole septic route, and then, <clears throat> I don't know, our hospital even got called for a code silver, so it had like, it was this whole big thing about how someone brought a gun to the hospital and like shot his hand, so it's kind of scary, like, like, you don't understand, like, how critical, how, I don't know, how, like, crazy it's been lately. And, yeah, so, it's, like, been really hard as a new grad because I just don't feel where, I don't feel like my skills or where I should be is there. And I don't feel ready to, like, be on my own, given I do have, like, a couple weeks left, but, like, I don't feel anywhere near ready to be on my own yet and I have no idea what to do like I don't know how to be better but yeah so if you have any tips for me leave them down below because I feel really lost right now and I just wanted to kind of update you guys because I know I literally haven't been posting in the longest time um I just haven't really had the energy to even post or even edit for the longest time um it's just been really draining and I wish I could say that it was easy and it was such a smooth transition but I wanted to keep it real with you guys because I feel like a lot of the times on this channel I don't really um, tell like the backstory and tell you everything behind the scenes and I did get sick earlier maybe in like October I think <laughs> it's because of the night shift like my body wasn't transitioning correctly my body wasn't used to being awake at night and just like that coupled with the stress of like just being a new grad nurse and having all these things that you need to learn and do and that stress those two put together like really like that's why I am the way I am right now uh, but yeah hopefully it gets better I will update you whenever um, I actually do start on my own if I ever start on my own, I don't, <sighs> but yeah, it's been rough, um, but I'm sure everyone could say, like, when they started, it was really hard, 
but I just wish I could just be better, faster, and like understand everything. <sighs> but I get it, it comes with time, and that's something I just need to learn to cope with. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below or message me on my Instagram at jazzanurse. And hopefully, next time I see you guys, I'll be doing better and feeling better than I am right now.